I'm here with Andy Blair of Fair Vote Canada, who has a booth set up in Vendors Alley, uh, looking to promote a change to a more proportional system of how we elect people. So, Andy, tell me a little bit about your organization and what it's advocating for. Uh, Fair Vote Canada is basically a grassroots, uh, non-profit, multi-partisan organization. So, we're here at the Liberal Convention, but uh, and there's a lot of Liberal members, but of course we have members from basically right across the political spectrum. And what we try to do is we try to educate people and promote a change in our electoral system. So right now we have something called First Past the Post, and it's used in a few countries around the world. The Western countries left that, are, that still use it are basically United States, Canada, and Great Britain. Most of the other countries have changed by now because they realize that it's a pretty unfair system. Uh, so we are basically proposing uh, to change the electoral system federally as well as provincially in, in all, pretty much all the provinces. Uh, to something that's much more fair and proportional, transparent and accountable. Now, the usual criticism of proportional representation is that it doesn't properly reflect regional differences, which is one of the advantages of a first-past-the-post or single-member constituency system. What do you say to that? Okay, there's two points to that. Uh, first point is, uh, number one, the first-past-the-post system here really exacerbates the regional differences uh, in Canada. That's actually a problem. Uh, Celebrating regional differences is actually okay, but uh, when it, uh, it when it extends goes too far, like uh, first past the post does, it really exagger exaggerates the regional differences. And right now, it's pitting one region against another. So, for example, in Alberta, if you're a liberal in Alberta, or an NDP or in Alberta, or a Green Party supporter in Alberta, you feel completely disenfranchised because 100% of the uh, elected representatives federally in Alberta are conservatives. So, for you, uh, showing up to the polls there is kind of a kind of a waste of time because you know who's going to win uh, and uh, obviously uh, not a hundred percent of Albertans voted conservative so there's a lot of people disenfranchised. Same thing here in Quebec. Uh, in Quebec uh, the bloc has about 51 seats currently out of the 75 Quebec seats. That's almost two-thirds and uh, by no means did two-thirds of Quebec voters vote for the bloc. So um, a lot of people feel disenfranchised again. Uh, there's a lot of NDPers here in Quebec. Uh, a lot of Green Party supporters, again, uh, uh, Liberals are underrepresented. So the bloc is overrepresented here in Quebec, for example, and the Conservatives are overrepresented in Alberta. And it makes it look like, for example, Alberta and the West in general is a Conservative bastion, and they're all very Conservative, and in Quebec they're a bunch of separatists. And it pits one region against one another because the bloc will fight the Conservatives, who represent the West, and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, and the Liberals will represent Ontario, and that's who gets sweeps the province quite often. So. That's not, really, that's not really the case. That's not really what voters said. Uh, the vote is actually much closer than uh, what the results would indicate, and uh, people are much more similar across the country than, uh, than what our current electoral standings uh, show. Um, so that's the first point. Second point is, is that it really depends on the voting system you choose. So you can still have a proportional system that celebrates regional differences. You, it, the, the devil's in the details. Lots of countries in the world have, uh, like Spain, for example, have uh, vast regional differences. They have different, almost within many nations within them, within the country, and uh, they uh, they have proportional representation, and they have regional parties, and they work quite well. So it can work for Canada as well. All right, um, we've seen some move to change electoral systems provincially. BC is an excellent example, which had a referendum in the last election or the election before, I forget which. But they weren't going for a strictly proportional system. They were looking at sort of an STV. Is your organization open to all sorts of alternatives to the first past the post? Or are you looking for, you know, 26% of the vote means roughly 26% of the seats? For Fair Vote Canada, the more proportional, the better. So uh, basically, we'd be open to almost any system so long as it has a high degree of proportionality. That means uh, as close to the vo popular vote as, uh, as your popular vote varies, right? So um, we want it to be, again, transparent and accountable and uh, above all proportional. Yeah, we're open to quite a few systems. There's quite a number of proportional systems out there. BC's uh, choice for STV is one of them. There's also uh, MMP, which is a mixed member uh, proportional system, which is in use in Germany and uh, a number of other countries. Uh, New Zealand just switched to that system uh, not too long ago, and they're having great success with that. Uh, I'd like to point out that New Zealand's a very uh, inherited their system from a very traditional system like ours, a Westminster style, first past the post British system, and they switched. Um, so there's no reason why Canada can't either. So for a fair vote, I guess, is the goal to just advocate for change or uh, are you looking so that to, sort of to make it the policy side of things more open and more recognize the issue or is it sort of to push for particular change? Well, 
Both. So all of the above, basically. We're saying that uh, we're trying to educate people, first of all, about uh, what the problem is. A lot of people, for example, young people especially, just stop voting because they feel that their votes don't count anymore. So they're alienated and you know what, they, they're right, their votes don't really count in many cases. Uh, a lot of other people don't vote because women are underrepresented in our system, minorities are underrepresented in our system. Again, it's bad for national unity because it pits one region against another and exacerbates regional differences. For these and a number of other problems or reasons, uh, that's why we're promoting an education campaign to educate Canadians about it. We're finding that uh, even here at the Liberal Convention, people are really, really receptive to, uh, to what we have to say and our ideas, and they think it's, in general, a good idea. We are also um, promoting uh, other things. So, for example, if uh, government would come out with uh, a law that's against uh, the fundamental tenets of democracy, we, we obviously have something to say about that. And something else that's new is uh, we may also be starting a, a charter challenge. So take, uh, take down the uh, Electoral uh, Act in Canada uh, on the basis of, uh, I think, Section 15 and Section 3 of the Canadian Charter of Rights and Freedoms for fair representation and equal representation. And if we're just about out of time, if people wanted to find out more about your organization or about that challenge, where would they get in touch with you? They could uh, go to the, our website. It's www.fairvote.ca. And there's lots of information. Most cities around Canada, including Ottawa, Montreal, Toronto, Vancouver, all have local groups that are you know, very friendly and they meet up every month in a local pub and uh, talk about electoral reform. There is a referendum coming up in Ontario next year, quite possibly. There's a citizens' assembly. Very important that everybody get out and vote in this referendum. The referendums to change the electoral system or not in Ontario. Thanks so much and have a good day.